Hello and welcome to the 11 o'clock news from Bahrain International. I'm Heba Abdul Ghaffour. The Deputy King, His Royal Highness Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, attended today the Gateway Golf Forum at the Four Seasons Hotel in Bahrain Bay. In remarks made during the event, His Royal Highness the Deputy King welcomed guests to the inaugural Gateway Golf, emphasizing that the aim of the forum is to establish new ways to drive regional and global growth. His Royal Highness highlighted the regional opportunities available to investors, including the plethora of projects that will be showcased by the Kingdom during the forum. These opportunities reflect the country's wider strategy to support innovation and increase the role of the private sector in driving economic development. The Deputy King spoke of the importance of partnerships across all government bodies in Bahrain, noting that Team Bahrain has a shared vision to deliver opportunities for the Kingdom's citizens. His Royal Highness concluded by noting that the government's efforts, which are based upon the Economic Vision 2030 principles of sustainability, competitiveness and fairness, are helping Bahrain adjust to rapid economic changes and support sustainable development in 2017. Bahrain saw a record year for inward investment with total foreign direct investment reaching $733 million. Gateway Gulf brings together over 500 global investors and business leaders to explore ways of unlocking the opportunities being created by the economic transformation in the GCC. The event provides a direct route into accessing the GCC market by showcasing major regional investment-ready projects worth over $18 billion while offering an opportunity to match funding with large-scale infrastructure projects in Bahrain. Bahrain is also fast-tracking substantial public and private sector investment projects worth over $32 billion across the manufacturing, logistics, infrastructure, healthcare, education and tourism sectors, supporting the Kingdom's goal of long-term sustainable economic growth. The first Gateway Gulf Investment Forum began today 
with the aim to explore ways of unlocking the opportunities being created by the economic transformation in the GCC. Uh, we are so pleased to see all these people coming from different parts of the world to Bahrain to attend uh, the Gulf Gateway. Uh, it can just tell you how they are interested about Bahrain, about the GCC region, uh, which is going through uh, uh, an economic transformation. The role of the government is, is changing uh, from operator to regulator to enabler. Uh, we want the private sector to participate in the economic development, and we can see it happening in all countries in the region. The event provided a direct route into entering the GCC market by showcasing major regional investment projects. Today we will talk about, the, for the first time, an energy fund. We are setting up an energy fund uh, to make these assets available for the very first time in the region to investors. They have uh, using the GPLP structure, so we'll have an independent fund management team in collaboration with Usul. Uh, so hopefully pension fund will be a big contributor and investor because of their confidence in the quality of the assets. The event included high-level plenary sessions that covered possible growth in strategic sectors, including manufacturing, tourism, real estate and energy. Now, from the electricity and water point of view and renewable energy, uh, I will be presenting the investment opportunity in that side, and that includes uh, around 4 billion US dollars over the next five years. So this uh, gives uh, the international investors, the regional investors, and the local investors the opportunity that are available and the facilities that the government of Bahrain provides for investors to come to Bahrain. A large number of international investors participated in the event to represent their businesses and form partnerships with the GCC countries. I think firstly Bahrain has been fantastic. This is like a mini Davos. and It's the first time it's been held in the region. Great opportunity to bring in top level executives, government officials into the kingdom see what we have to offer and what the region has to offer. Uh, this event we have a lot of contacts here with the governmental contacts and uh, some other private uh, equity firms and investors so we can just get ourselves much more understandable what we can create so far for the past 10 years in Turkey as a healthcare group and so invest in maybe in Middle East and Bahrain and other countries, GCC countries. We are in the fintech uh, business. We've created an economic innovation that uh, unlocks capacity as a new asset class. So we create new forms of credit and new sources of demand by unlocking capacity, which is real economy assets, as a new form of credit or money. The event discussed a number of important issues and topics in its first day, and tomorrow the event will introduce brand new topics and investment opportunities. The Gateway Gulf brings together more than 500 investors to discuss investment opportunities that will lead to enhancing the economy of the kingdom as well as the GCC countries. Reporting for Bahrain International, I am Hamid Youssef. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, today met with the State of Kuwait's Minister of Finance, Dr. Naif Al Hajraf, Kuwait's Minister of Commerce and Industry, and Minister of State for Youth Affairs, Khalid Nasser Al Rawdan, and the Managing Director of Kuwait Investment Authority, Farooq Ali Bistigi on the sidelines of the Gateway Gulf Forum held at Bahrain Bay. His Royal Highness the Deputy King highlighted the vital importance of the Gateway Gulf Forum in informing regional and international investors on investment opportunities within the Kingdom of Bahrain and the wider region. His Royal Highness further highlighted that the forum acts as a platform to attract foreign and direct investment to the region. The Deputy King hailed the deep historic ties between Bahrain and Kuwait, which continue to grow across various levels. For their part, the Kuwaiti delegation expressed gratitude for meeting His Royal Highness and praised his role in the development of bilateral ties. The delegation further praised the Gateway Gulf Forum held under the patronage of His Royal Highness and its importance in stimulating new discussions on regional, economic growth and stability. His Royal Highness the Deputy King, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, also met with the Chairman and Managing Director of Lulu Group International Yusuf Ali on the sidelines of the Gateway Gulf Forum held at Bahrain Bay. 
During the meeting, His Royal Highness highlighted the importance of the retail sector as an engine for economic growth and emphasized Bahrain's commitment to supporting innovation and skills development as a means to increase the private sector's contribution to the kingdom's economy. For his part, Yusuf Ali expressed gratitude for the opportunity to meet His Royal Highness and praised his role in promoting collaboration between public and private sector partners to support regional and global growth. The Gulf Gateway Forum is a manifestation of a mutual cooperation and a tool to continue progress and prosperity at all levels, meet the various economic and financial challenges, and strive to attract more investments to not only Bahrain, but also the Gulf and other countries to support their economies. The biggest uh, economic forum happened ever in Bahrain. It is uh, a unique uh, initiative. Um, the importance of this conference, although it is happening on, on, in, in Bahrain, but uh, the benefit goes much beyond uh, uh, Bahrain to the GCC and even uh, beyond that. Uh, the importance of this uh, conference is really to address and highlight uh, issues, uh, reforms. This is critically important for us. It showcases the work that Bahrain has done into improving its competitiveness in the regulatory the, uh, system, the laws that are actually governing business processes. It also showcases the investment that has gone on through the government-owned companies like Alba, Petrochemical and other initiatives. And it also showcases uh, our aspirations for the coming years. Continuous developments and changes in the international economic environment and their repercussions on growth rates necessitate the adoption of policies that restore economic balances both internally and externally. Excellent opportunity to feature the advantages that Bahrain has as a gateway to the Gulf but as a market in and of itself, as a location where businesses will feel comfortable to invest uh, and set up uh, operations. We've certainly seen uh, in the attraction of American businesses over the last uh, couple of years and even very recently in an accelerated fashion that there's an environment here that is very favorable to the growth and development of, of good business opportunities. And so this is an opportunity this conference presents to feature all of that for a broader audience, an investor audience. The event provides a direct route into accessing the GCC market by showcasing major regional investment-ready projects worth 18 billion US dollars with projects in the planning phase driving up the value of the project pipeline to 26 billion US dollars. Well, this is a great event for Bahrain and uh, for us to showcase uh, the new developments in Bahrain and the projects in the pipelines. I think the presence of a uh, wide range of audience from the GCC and from abroad is uh, quite interesting. It resembles the importance of Bahrain because it's the center of GCC. And the, successful, the success of the event has uh, been shown since the beginning with the abundant number of investors attending that shows interest to invest in GCC. Uh, with Bahrain Boss involved, it's definitely something we look forward to because it reflects directly and indirectly Bahrain is also fast-tracking substantial public and private sector investment projects worth over 32 billion US dollars across the manufacturing, logistics, infrastructure, healthcare, education and tourism sectors, supporting the kingdom's goal of long-term sustainable economic growth. Reporting for Bahrain International, Amheba Abdul Ghaffar.
His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, visited today the Hid housing project under the framework of following up on various development projects across the kingdom. His Royal Highness was briefed on the progress of the project and met a number of Hid citizens. He listened to their needs, especially regarding developing facilities and infrastructure. His Royal Highness then listened to a briefing by the Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning, Assam Khalaf, the Housing Minister, Basim Al Hamar, and members of the Muharraq Municipal Council on the needs of the citizens of Hid and the latest developments in the city. His Royal Highness directed all ministries and concerned bodies to intensify efforts to speed up the completion of the project and follow up on the needs of the people in order to provide them with high living standards. He affirmed that the aim of this visit is to ensure the provision of high quality services to the people. He added that the people of Bahrain is the government's top priority. He affirmed his keenness to personally meet with the people and follow up on their affairs in order to achieve the best interest for the country and the people. He highlighted that the development witnessed in Hid calls for upgrading the services provided to citizens and residents. He stressed the importance to complete the government projects in the Maharra Governorate and provide the facilities and services needed such as housing, health, education and infrastructure, making Maharraq an integrated city. The Minister of Works, Municipalities Affairs and Urban Planning and the Housing Minister expressed appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister and for his keenness to follow up on the projects in the Kingdom. They affirmed their keenness to implement His Royal Highness directives and speed up the completion process. Maharraq Municipal Council Chairman Muhammad Al Sinan expressed thanks and appreciation for His Royal Highness the Prime Minister's visit and his follow up on various major projects that cover all sectors of the kingdom. He praised the role of His Royal Highness in achieving best interests for the people of Bahrain and to always provide them with high quality services. The representative of the city of Hid at the Maharraq Municipal Council, Yusuf Al Thawadi, praised the visit of His Royal Highness and expressed pride in the positive outcomes resulting from this visit. The citizens of Hid expressed pleasure and praised the efforts of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for always meeting up with citizens and listening to their needs. They added that the visit by His Royal Highness contributes to strengthening unity and enhancing coexistence within the Bahraini society. They wished His Royal Highness abundant health and happiness.
the first deputy chairman of the Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and honorary president of Bahrain Mixed Martial Arts Federation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, arrived in Indonesian capital Jakarta to attend the 12th edition of the Brave Championship, organized by the Khalid bin Hamad Mixed Martial Arts Organization under the theme Legend on Friday. His Highness was received by the Chief of Protocol in the Presidential Office of Indonesia, Mr. Alfiano, and the Head of Bahrain's Diplomatic Mission to Indonesia, Dr. Mohammad Ghassan Sheikho. His Highness affirmed that the championship will support cooperation in the sports field between the two countries. His Highness stressed that the aim of the championship is to continue efforts to support Bahrain's position on the world sports map, which thanks to His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa's support of the youth and sports sector and the follow-up of the representative of His Majesty the King for charity work in youth affairs, Chairman of Supreme Council of Youth and Sports and President of Bahrain Olympic Committee, His Highness, Sheikh Nasser bin Hamad Al Khalifa reached an advanced level. His Highness expressed aspirations for strong competitions, wishing everyone success. The first Deputy President of the Supreme Council for Youth and Sports, President of Bahrain Athletics Association and Honorary President of Bahrain Disabled Sports Federation, His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa, affirmed that the success of the initiatives, including the Khalid bin Hamad Youth Theatre Award Festival for National Clubs, Youth Centres and People with Disabilities, is the result of the support of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa in providing capabilities to develop youth in various fields. His Highness noted that the award is a platform for the youth to develop the theatre industry in Bahrain. He noted the wide participation of national clubs, youth centres and people with disabilities which come in line with the efforts of the Ministry of Youth and Sports Affairs led, led by Minister Hisham bin Mohammed al Jodur, in raising the number of participants in the award and wished everyone success. The organizing committee of the Khalid bin Hamad Youth Theatre Award had held a press conference to reveal details of the award. His Highness Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad Al Khalifa's initiatives are divided into four sections sports, culture, humanitarian, and practical. His Highness's Festival of Youth Theatre comes in its fourth edition within the framework of his initiatives in the cultural and humanitarian fields. The youth theatre brings young people's ideas to reality and gives them a platform for self-expression. Sheikh Khalid's several initiatives work to serve the youth sector in the kingdom and activate the role of young people. We are uh, proceeding the preparations for the fourth season of, uh, of the theatre festival, uh, which is having a, a, a considerable and consideration, let's say, from Sheikh Khalid bin Hamad. Uh, and uh, it is a kind now of a spot where talented people in the theater may enjoy showing their talent on stage. The Khalid bin Hamad Youth Theater Festival is considered the largest local theater festival in the kingdom. The first version saw 10 performances, which rose to 12 in the second edition, reached 20 in the third installment, and is currently at a record 32 performances scheduled for this year's festival. Every year uh, now we find lots of troops are waiting to join and participate in this competition, not only for competing, it's for to show their talent on stage. So we are very proud that this, uh, this festival, every year it's developing and every year it's attracting more and more talented people. This year we are very confident uh, that we will be having a kind of a different standards where it will uprise everything uh, and all the shows and even the presentation from the first step you go through the lobby and then going ahead to, sh to see the show, to show it in a different way. This initiative falls in line with the directives of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa to support the youth in the kingdom and promote their creativity and talents. Reporting for Bahrain International, I'm Shogh Mohammed. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, delegated his advisor, Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, to attend the ceremony held at the Diplomat Hotel this evening and hosted by the Russian ambassador to Bahrain, Vedif Garaev, marking his country's national day in the presence of a number of senior officials and members of the diplomatic corps accredited in Bahrain, as well as a number of guests. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa conveyed the greetings and congratulations of His Royal Highness the Prime Minister to the Russian leadership and 
people and his wishes to Russia for further progress and prosperity. Sheikh Salman bin Khalifa hailed the relations between Bahrain and Russia and the development they witnessed in various fields, affirming the keenness of Bahrain on advancing cooperation with Russia. Though activating joint agreements and memorandums of cooperation to achieve the aspirations of the two countries and their peoples. For his part, the Russian ambassador to Bahrain expressed thanks and appreciation to His Royal Highness the Prime Minister for his keenness on supporting cooperation between the two countries, affirming the keenness of his country to bolster cooperation and partnership with Bahrain for the interest of the two peoples. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, deputized the Supreme Council of Health Chairman, Lieutenant General Sheikh Mohammed bin Abdullah Al Khalifa, and Chairman of Al Hikmah Pensioner Society to attend the third annual ceremony to honor retirees from the public and private sectors, which is held under the patronage of His Royal Highness. Organized by the Social Insurance Organization in coordination with Al Hikmah Pensioner Society. The ceremony will be held for 150 long-serving retirees from public and private sectors in appreciation of their dedicated efforts in building the nation. On the sidelines of his participation in the 24th Ordinary Session of General Conference of the Arab League Educational, Cultural and Scientific Organization, Alexo, under the Jerusalem is Palestinian Minister of Education, Dr. Majid al nuaimi met with the organization's Director General, Dr. Saud Al-Harbi, during the meeting, they discussed a number of issues of common concern to Bahrain and the Arab organization. The minister also invited the director general to participate in the number of events marking the 100th anniversary of education in the Kingdom of Bahrain next year. For his part, the director general expressed the organization's appreciation of the Kingdom of Bahrain and its acts of role in educational aspect. He expressed his congratulations on the occasion of the 100th anniversary, stressing the organization's pride in Bahrain's educational leadership in many fields and the ministry's implementation of several developmental projects such as digital empowerment, technical and vocational education, and care for people with special needs, in addition to the participation of Bahrain, represented in the UNESCO Prize, King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, for the use of information technologies and communication in the field of education. The Minister of Oil, Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa Al Khalifa, inaugurated a workshop on the production capacity of non traditional reservoirs in the Middle East, which will continue for two days with a wide participation of specialists, experts, and interested parties in the field of oil and gas, as well as 150 participants from various world countries to discuss the technical challenges in the work environment. The minister welcomed the participating delegations, expressing hope that the scientific and practical papers discussed in the workshop will be beneficial and that the delegations will review the best technical practices related to discovering, refining and producing oil and gas resources, as well as technologies related to upgrading development and improvement strategies. He highly praised the efforts exerted by the Society of Petroleum Engineers in creating and designing sustainable oil programs and events that enhance the strategy of developing the oil sector. Sheikh Mohammed bin Khalifa affirmed the keenness of Bahrain to provide support to specialized events that support economic knowledge and developmental system as well as establish a system of exchanging information and experiences to advance the competency of human resources and build their abilities and skills as well as boost sustainable development in the kingdom, GCC countries and the Middle East. 
The Information Ministers of Terrorism Combating Countries held a meeting on the sidelines of the Arab Information Ministries meeting that was held yesterday in Cairo. The ministers affirmed the importance of continuing the development of the media strategies and mechanisms aimed at combating the speech of sedition and extremism, as well as exposing countries that support and fund terrorism. The ministers stressed the necessity to counter malicious media, which continuously promotes extremist ideology and hosts its leaders under the pretext of professionalism. The ministers also stressed their absolute rejection and condemnation of the practices of some media platforms, which continue their policy of disrupting the unity of Arab nations through spreading topics and news aimed at destabilizing the national fabric of Arab countries. The ministers discussed the mechanisms of developing joint work between quartered countries for the vital role of media in enlightening the community and promoting positive ideas that guarantee peaceful coexistence between various categories and segments of the society. They also stressed the importance of meetings and continuous coordination as well as building on the successes that revealed false media. The meeting was attended by the Saudi Minister of Culture and Information, Dr. Awad bin Saleh Al Awad, the Emirati Minister of State, and Chairman of UAE National Media Council, Sultan bin Ahmad Al Jaber, the Minister of Information Affairs, Ali bin Mohammed Al Rumehi, and the Egyptian head of the Supreme Council for Media Regulation, Makram Mohammed Ahmed. The Undersecretary of Ministry of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs, Dr. Abdullah bin Ahmed Al Khalifa, today received at his office in the Ministry of Foreign Affairs a delegation from the United Nations Department of Economic and Social Affairs Office for Sustainable Development, led by Saras Jagannat and UN Resident Coordinator and UNDP Resident Representative of the United Nations Development Program in Bahrain, Amin Al Sharqawi. The delegation's visit to the Kingdom of Bahrain falls within bilateral coordination and consultations ahead of preparation of the Kingdom's first voluntary national report on the implementation of the Sustainable Development Goals 2030. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah affirmed during the meeting that the Kingdom of Bahrain, under the leadership of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa, accords great importance to SDG's 2030 implementation as being the cornerstone of the future and an important indicator that Bahrain represents an advanced development model in line with its economic vision 2030. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah pointed out that the Kingdom of Bahrain has made great strides in implementing the comprehensive sustainable development goals and in providing the appropriate and stimulating environment to achieve these goals. As a result of adopting the best standards of quality and performance in the government program, in addition to investing in human resources in terms of education and qualification, considering them the center and purpose of development, he added that the voluntary report will be an opportunity for the Kingdom to demonstrate the size of the great development and qualitative initiatives it has achieved. The Under Secretary for International Affairs reviewed with his guests Bahrain's efforts in preparing its first voluntary national reports on implementation of the SDGs, including its formation of National Information Committee, chaired by the Minister of Cabinet Affairs, Mohammed bin Ibrahim Al Mutawwa. Among other efforts, he cited the series of consultations the Kingdom has conducted with civil society organizations, the private sector, academics and parties interested in the process of preparing and presenting constructive views and recommendations, noting that the Kingdom of Bahrain has made tangible contributions to the formulation of sustainable development goals through active participation in consultative processes prior to the adoption of the objectives. The Under Secretary of the Minister of Foreign Affairs for International Affairs also praised the productive cooperation with the United Nations. The Under Secretary noted the important and productive initiatives between the two sides. Dr. Sheikh Abdullah said that the United Nations has in many areas circulated the model of Bahrain as a pioneering vibration in the world expressing his optimism that the development aspect is a prosperous ground for mutual cooperation, capacity building and the transfer of expertise in the interest of humanitarian progress. 
Jagannath expressed her admiration for the keenness of the Kingdom of Bahrain in preparing the first voluntary national report, looking forward to working with the technical team to prepare the report and to present the experiences of the states that have submitted their national reports in previous years. The United Nations Resident Coordinator and Resident Representative of UNDP praised the Kingdom's efforts in preparing its voluntary report reflecting the Kingdom's commitment to achieving sustainable development. The Labour Fund Tamkin received today the delegation of the Sustainable Development Directorate at the UN Department of Economic and Social Affairs led by Saras Jagannath. The meeting discussed means of supporting the goals of 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. The role of Tamkin in consolidating the government's role in support of the private sector was also discussed. The delegation was briefed on Tamkin's latest programs and services, as well as the indicators of its success in achieving the goals of sustainable development, which are in line with Bahrain's Economic Vision 2030, and the National Action Charter, whose foundation was laid by His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. The delegation was also briefed on the role of Tamkin in the sustainability of the private sector on the sidelines of the meeting. The CEO of Tamkin, Dr. Ibrahim Janahi, affirmed that the Labour Fund is a key partner in promoting the objectives of sustainable development. He recalled Tim Keen's initiatives in supporting Bahraini institutions and attracting international investments. For its part, the delegation commended the role of Tim Keen in realizing growth needs and achieving the goals of sustainable development. The permanent representative of the Kingdom of Bahrain to the United Nations in New York, Ambassador Jamal al ruwai conveyed the greetings of His Majesty King Hamad bin Isa Al Khalifa. His Royal Highness the Prime Minister, Prince Khalifa bin Salman Al Khalifa, and His Royal Highness the Crown Prince, Deputy Supreme Commander, and First Deputy Prime Minister, Prince Salman bin Hamad Al Khalifa, to the elected President of the Republic of Costa Rica, Carlos Alvarado, and their wishes to further progress and prosperity to him and his friendly country. This came during the participation of the permanent representative in the inauguration ceremony of the President of the Republic of Costa Rica, which took place in the Costa Rican capital, San Jose, yesterday, where he praised the distinguished relations of friendship between Bahrain and Costa Rica and stressed the keenness of Bahrain to develop these relations at all levels for the benefit of the two countries and their people. The Kingdom of Bahrain supports the decision of the President of the United States of America, Donald Trump, to withdraw from the nuclear agreement with Iran and reimpose severe sanctions against the Iranian regime. This decision reflects the commitment of the United States to confront Iranian policies and Iran's continuous attempts to spread terrorism in the region, in full violation of international norms and laws. The agreement was characterized by several shortcomings, most important of which was not addressing Iran's ballistic missile program, nor Iran's threat to the security and stability of the region through its interference in the international affairs or other countries, as well as its support for militias in those countries. The Kingdom of Bahrain affirms its solidarity with the decision taken by President Donald Trump, noting his support for the efforts of the United States that aim to end terrorism at both regional and international national levels. The Kingdom of Bahrain also calls upon all other signatories to the agreement to consider the security and peace of the region and to take steps similar to those of the United States. The Kingdom of Bahrain reiterates its support for all efforts aimed at freeing the Middle East of nuclear weapons and other weapons of mass destruction, stressing its stance towards all measures taken to present Iran obtaining nuclear weapons to combat its funding and support of extremist militias in the region and to urge Iran to respect its neighbors' sovereignty and not interfere in their internal affairs.